campus to the stage, we want to welcome Brother Lorenzo. Take, make sure you tune in and listen to the miraculous things that the Lord has done in this great man of God's life. Praise the Lord and God bless you. And happy resurrection to you on this day. We thank God for this day and this time that he gives us. My name is Minister Lorenzo Rios. This is my wife, Juanita Rios. And we are here to tell you a little bit about our resurrection story. So we can go back, you know, but we're on limited time, so I'm going to make it fast and short. But I was involved with the gangs and the drugs and all my life uh, chasing women, doing the things I wasn't supposed to in and out of jail, probation, you name it, I've done it. But I'm gonna sum this up to the day of the year 2013. I was trying to get saved and find the Lord because I was sick and tired of living this life of sin and ugliness. And uh, I would pray out to God and call upon him in a time of long when I was high and did, out of my mind and didn't know what to do, didn't like it and still, my phone rang and distracted me, but uh, my time I would seek him and pray. Even when I was seeing the evil spirits that were taunting me in my mind, I was calling on the Lord, I'm tired, save me, I need you. I was on the run from going to prison. I was on the run for three years selling drugs, just living the life I shouldn't, running from the law, running from my family, my children, not being a father like I needed to be, uh, just, just, burnt out, fed up, accepted the life that I'm going to prison, and that's what it is, uh, taking the chances of adding more time onto what I was facing already. But a long story short, God heard my prayers. One day I get pulled over. I had methamphetamine on me, an ounce, quarter pound of marijuana, open containers, smoking a joint. The cop pulled me over driving with no license. And I look at him and I told him, Thank you. He looked at me like I was crazy, but he didn't understand that I was already tired and fed up and seeking for change in my life and wanting God, but didn't know how to fully surrender. I was distracted by the, the phone that would ring and somebody needed a bag. Oh, come serve me this and give me that, or let's get high and smoke this. But in my time, I was seeking the Lord from my whole broken heart. And I thank that cop for pulling me over that day. And he knew I was under the influence. He knew that I had drugs. He smelt it. <laughs> oh, Lord. But he looked at me and I told him, sir, I got a warrant for my arrest. I've been on the run for three years. I have no license. He smelt the marijuana, saw the open container, saw the 12-pack there. He looked at me and said, I will run your name. And if you come back and it says what it is, we'll take it from there. So I'm trying to call my wife, babe, they got me. She would not answer. She was mad at me hanging up, kept hanging up. And finally I said, listen, they got me. Come get the truck. I'm going to jail. He comes back to me and he says, sir, you were truthful to me. And I really dearly appreciate that for being so honest to me. I'm not going to charge you for the drugs. I'm not going to charge you for the open container. I'm not going to charge you for the marijuana. I'm not going to give you a DUI. I'm not even going to pound your truck if you call your wife to come get, pick it up right now. I will just take you in for your warrant. And I thanked God and started crying. He didn't know why I was crying, but I knew inside why I was crying. So as he arrested me, he took me to the back of the police car. I was sitting there crying out to God, telling him, if this is you trying to get my attention, this is the only way you can stop me was to get me alone and put me behind these bars because I kept seeking you but running from you at the same time. I said, let your will be done. If this is you, I will give you my life today. But if it's the enemy, I ask that you rebuke him over my life, Father God, that you will help me through this time and get me through whatever I need to face, even if it's going to prison, being on parole, whatever it is that you will guide me. As I said in the holding tank, there's men all around me. I kept praying out to God in front of them on my knees. They looked at me like I was crazy. What were you talking about? What are you doing, man? Get up, you're going upstairs. I just kept saying, God, if this is you and it's where you put me to get my attention, answering my prayers or that hand that I was seeking that I never grabbed, you will show me you. 
I called them out and said, if you're this mighty God that they say you are, that you can do all things, you will allow me to walk out of here today and I will give you my life. And I said that prayer over and over and the CEO comes and says, Rios, they moved me to another holding tank. It's one right before you dress out and go upstairs. He tells me, get ready, you're gonna get dressed out and go upstairs. So there's four other guys there and I do the same prayer on my knees. Lord, I'm calling you out right now. Show me you. You want me? I need to show you. Show me you right now. And one thing is when you call out the Lord, glory be to God. Glory be to God. That CEO came back to me and called me out by my name. I walk up and I'm already walking to the door because I'm familiar where, where you got to go to dress out and go upstairs. He tells me, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm walking ahead of you getting there. He's like, well, you're going that way. And that was to the door to go home. I looked at him and said, what, are you sure? He's like, you're going home. I said, are you sure? I've been on a run three years, joint suspension and everything. He's like, you're going home. Do you want me to look into it more and change it? No, sir, thank you very much. So I go home. And I promised God that day I would give him my life. And that day I did. 2013, I was home with my wife praying and asking to lead me to a place where I could worship him and seek him and know more about him to show me how to pray and to read the word, to understand it. Show me you, Lord, how I asked you to show me. Show me like never before. Lead me, lead me, lead me. And during this process, I already fell from a church, got discouraged. And one morning, I woke up praying and praying. And we lived down the street from Bethesda here for nine years and never sought to seek this place as home or a place to worship. And that morning, I felt it heavy in my heart. Get your family and go down the street and walk into that place of Bethesda. And I tell you what, that was the best thing I ever did in my life. I got my wife that Sunday, walked into the Bethesda, didn't know what to expect, didn't know how to act. I just came trying to find out who this God was, and what could he do for me. And guess what? The first person I saw in this place was Pastor Tobias Brookings. He was across the courtyard, and all I could see was this big, beautiful, loving smile. And he ran to us at the gate with open arms, and I went to shake his hand, and he gave me a hug. A hug. He didn't shake my hand. He showed me the love of God, and right there and then I knew, thank you, Lord, this is where I'm supposed to be and I began to come. And this is where I came to seek the Lord at Bethesda churches. And I came faithfully every Sunday. Then it became every service. And then I got connected. And then I met the family. And then I got welcomed. And then I got baptized in the name of Jesus in the year 2014. And Bethesda ain't been nothing but a true blessing to me. All the elders here, during times of my life, I needed them, Elder Grisby and Randolph. Pastor Brookins and all the Bethesda family has been a true blessing to me and my family. I've grown so much. I overcame what I was supposed to overcome. And God's not done yet. God is not done yet. Because many are called, but few are chosen. And I was chosen for a purpose. And I just thank God for this place that I call home, his house, Bethesda. It's been a true blessing to me and my family. And that is my resurrection story. And I pray that it blesses somebody in the similar shoes, that it fell on somebody's heart and just gives them encouragement. For there is hope in Jesus Christ. And that is the best thing I ever did in my life was give my life to him. So I pray blessings over your life, and thank you for this time. God bless you.